It's the Anfield app, Neil Atkinson, Jay McKenna, Carl Kopak, and Ad Amelia with you for the next hour or so. Got a clip from the exclusive uh, Jordan Henderson interview done by Gareth Roberts and John Gibbons. That's coming for you as well. We're going to have a chat about the meeting that Jay chaired on Saturday around Safe Stand and made up that he's coming uh, on this one uh, to talk about that later on as well. And Carl was there too, and they're going to talk us through what's happened. But before all of that, well, he's uh, he's managed to create some news for us uh, there and then. Um, Jay McKenna, uh, Naby Kai is running around walloping teammates and getting training cancelled um, is it daft to think this is just one of those things uh, or is it daft to think this is linked to his uh, his desire to leave uh, Leipzig and move to Liverpool it's one hell of a coincidence if this isn't intentional um, as we've just pointed out and we were talking to people from here then Naby Keita sat in the room with the chief executive and the coach this morning Annie and said oh, you know you know, what's happening? And they've said, well, nothing's changed as far as we're concerned. And he said, oh, nothing's changed. I'll fucking show you. <laughs> and um, his poor midfield partner, Diego, Jeme, whatever his name is, has um, is cocked for it. Naby Keita said, you want a transfer request? <laughs> One better, lads. And it, it's just literally caused chaos. It does feel like that's the case, Carl. It's, it is It is very hard not to think that this is that, that this is a player who's at the very least very wound up by things, uh, who's gone into a training session and... And cause chaos. It might be that there's something even a little bit more from a Leipzig point of view sinister than that, which is that he's thought, you know what, I'll uh, I'll make a bit of a point here that I want out. The best thing you could do maybe is see if you can get one more big money offer from Liverpool, accept it, and we all move on with our lives. I think this is the way all transfers should now be conducted in the future. <laughs> we should all be moving on as soon as possible. So basically, anyone who wants to move just goes goes in with a bit of an attitude. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Because it could just be a coincidence. But um, it, it it it's felt it's fantastic if it if it's. Uh, if he's done it on purpose, but it could be frustration. It could be just his first day back in training, a bit overzealous. So you're now going to be devil's advocate um, on his side, but uh, oh, just it is too much of a choice, right? It's just just too much of a coincidence. It's just an amazing thing that's happened. That's just extra. I mean, the thing I can't get past is, is cancelling training. Not just he's had a knock go off. Now we're all going home because of what just happened. Well, that's, that's that's mad. Yeah, there is that. All the lads just maybe fancies fancies an early dart. Yeah, exactly. Two of the yeah. lads had something planned, and he said, "Nabby, go ahead. You're not flavour of the month, mate. <laughs> you might as well. You, you might as well go the all log here." And he's been pushing into queues and the canteen and stuff. This lad, and anyway, so <laughs> that's what I was send it, send, it, it, send the emails in caps. He might yeah, have, he might have just been his midfield midfield partner. Might have just been doing his head in the whole season. It reminds me of the Running Man or something. You know, like the new player yeah. gets announced and they've got a special skill and they need to come and he come on comes on and his special skill is. He takes, he cuts people in half with his feet and then punches them in the face <laughs> in order to get his uh, to get his run. It's, I mean, Adam, you know, there is, it can, it could throw up other questions. It could, you know, as as we have a we have a, a friend of yours uh, and ours in the office, Sam, who supports us, and he said, "What are you going to do in three years' time when he's when he's walloping people in Liverpool training sessions when he wants to move to Real Madrid?" And it is worth pointing out that you know it, it's easy. Some people might think, "Oh, it's not great that sort of thing. This isn't great conduct." And I think that you know that's a fair point uh, up to a point, but this is a football. Liverpool very very much tw- that's 2020's problem it'll probably, ne- it'll probably never come <laughs> no. that's, that's just, um, that's just, that's just do what football fans do and be hypocrites and say that he absolutely. shouldn't have done it in 2020 yeah absolutely yeah. in a Liverpool shirt it's absolutely ab- ab- abhorrent doing it to come to South that, Liverpool I, I hate what this thing about, about how we're not allowed to be hypocrites like well you enjoyed winning 10-0 that time I can't believe you're upset you've lost 10-0 now really? <laughs> is that the same <laughs> we, we're allowed to be duplicitous I think yeah. That, yeah, it, it, I'm all for it yeah yeah yeah. Uh, otherwise, what would we talk about on here? Exactly. You know, and so just coming now, 2020. If you're listening, we'll be talking about this. <laughs> Naby Keita, haven't just done it to. Yeah. Hello to everyone who's listening back in the archives. <laughs> Please don't text in. <laughs> you may still be charged. <laughs> it's. It looked like it's strange, Carl. I mean, all the way through, and and last couple of days, there's been people say that people saying oh, Liverpool. May well have given up hope. That's come through from a few a few of the journalists uh, who were close to the club and close to uh, just close to the club, close to transfers in general. People you can trust. My my thing on it is all the way through the summer though. There's something else that's been said, which is Liverpool are going to be prepared to pay eighty million for Naby Keita, eighty million euros, and that's the bid that hasn't gone in yet. And I just sort of think I expect that bid to go in for all the stuff now that Liverpool have walked away. I just think if Liverpool haven't done the eighty million bid uh, once. Then I think the other side of that, if Leipzig say no, uh, then there's every chance that that is when Liverpool walk away. But I just sort of think all the way through the summer, people have been saying Liverpool will have to go mad, it'll have to be huge, it'll have to be ridiculous. I think you, I'd be surprised if there isn't one more uh, throw of the dice from Liverpool. Yeah, and I think that's the same about, uh, about Van Dyke as well. I think 
I keep saying about this all the time, it's far too early. I mean, if this is going to be your big um, signing for the new season, it's just too early to do it yet. Leipzig are going to want to keep hold as long as possible. They've got fans too. They've got shareholders. Now they're going to want to say, no, no, we resisted all the way. And they're probably, as I just said to you outside, they're probably just looking at their watch and seeing what data is. They're going, no, I'm in 10 days maybe, not yet, far too soon. I think there is going to be another big going in. I don't think it's dead at all because these things are never really dead. I just don't think they are. It's always just one. It, it, it's dead until someone says something else, and then it's you know then it's then it's up and running again. It's. I, I was wondering about what what it is that makes one transfer suddenly take the front seat and one takes the back seat. Is it is it the the. The, is it is it us just deciding us as in Liverpool FC deciding to to make more effort with that one this week? It feels a little it, that that doesn't feel that likely. So is it that there's some encouragement from from the uh, fr- from from the selling club and then they they, they 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 decide to do a little bit more work on that one, or is it a media construct entirely? I don't really know. Uh, they, but this that it felt up until. Um, well, this is probably why Kate has decided to cut someone in half in training. It felt as if Van Dyke was starting to take the front seat again for a minute there, um, and I still, I still think this is pro- that's probably our our most important transfer. Really, I, I still think that's the that that's if there is a number one target, um, the the position of centre back has to be it probably, and um, and and so therefore with with, with us only having Van Dyke in mind. Um, as, as as plan A, that sort of still seems to be the one that you'd that, that you'd you'd think. You'd, well, you'd hope it wouldn't be one or the other. It doesn't seem as if it's one or the other. So it, it's uh, but that that seems to be the one that, that they'd they'd go for first. Just to throw it all in the pot before we go over to Jay Adam. <clears throat> the other thing, the other noise here though is that Liverpool could suddenly find themselves under the cosh if Neymar goes to Paris yeah, Saint-Germain, yeah. at which point Barcelona have a hell of a lot of money burning a hole in the pockets and put some supporters to try to placate and. That would possibly throw a bit of pressure on the Cater deal, because all the way through, we, I think there is the feeling that it's not essential that Liverpool add another midfielder. I think we could do with one. I think buying Cater, I think, would be a massive boost for the club, and I think it'd be a massive boost going into the new season. But it, it doesn't take much for it to suddenly become that we really need to get this one sorted. True, I, and and when I I remember I did the gutter show a couple of months ago and said that the um I think I think I broke the news that actually he's nothing like Kante. I know that's that's mainstream now, <laughs> but I, that, I'm I'm being a bit lighthearted. But when I watched his videos, I thought he's a bit like Coutinho, Coutinho playing deeper without the long shots and without a few other things. So it, 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 the Cater, I, I think, although he's got more to his game in in other ways, it, you, you could you could say that we were we were doing Coutinho's long term replacement with him anyway. But we're trying to do it, you know, we're trying to fa- phase him in, and then and then everybody thinks Coutinho ends up at Barcelona. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's it certainly if um, if Coutinho's head's turned and he um, starts headbutting the academy players tomorrow <laughs> to to, uh, to force a move, then yeah, that that the cater and centre mid does become uh, just as much a priority as, as centre half. I I think Liverpool will get lots of attention around Coutinho. I, I, I think I think Guillaume Balaguer tweeted as well saying that now apparently Neymar's talking about that if he stays, he wants. Barcelona to sign Coutinho for him, as if like you know this is like some kind of like he's gonna come and live in his garden with him or something. Yeah, <laughs> Just this, this, this part of the contract, no no bumping pay, mate. Got your own footballer. Um, uh, we said on Friday's show, didn't we? Neil, like you know, it, it would make a lot of sense. You could imagine for Barcelona to want to sign Coutinho as some kind of replacement for Iniesta. I don't does, think they, 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 like they, yeah. they picture him as some kind of name the obvious move. Just um, the obvious replacement. And, and and it would make sense for a player like him to, to want to go and play there I think it becomes a really difficult for summer for Liverpool if the you know Cater and Van Dijk aren't happening and then there's lots and lots and lots of attention focused on whether Coutinho's wanted elsewhere Liverpool are going to come under an awful lot of pressure from their own fans about well we're going we need something to happen here. We want to know yeah. what's going mm. on, and also um, from their own players, you'd think as well, Jamie. I mean, the point about this is that we're going to talk to Henderson in a bit, but the point about this is this is a squad that last season gets seventy six points, and probably everyone in that squad is thinking to themselves, "We know we're good enough to go on from here and do more." But we need, but the one thing we can demonstrate last season, and footballers will always look for excuses, but the one thing, not all of them, sorry, that's unfair, but some will. But in general, footballers aren't thick, and the one thing that they'll be thinking is a lot of what we were thinking last season, which is if we'd had another three or four very good players, then we don't know where the limit would be. And that might be what they'd be thinking as well, Jay. So, you know, those players would be thinking, well, 
certainly if you're going to let one, if, if one ends up going or there's pressure for one to go, they need to see that there's been genuine improvements. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, we, I, you can't stand still. So you need to add to your team anyway, to to even just stay as the fourth best team. You know, signing Van Dijk doesn't necessarily mean we're going to finish third, second or first. Mm. You know, it, it increases your chances of that. But other clubs are, are improving their their playing staff. You need to sign players just to stand still. And Van Dijk might be that kind of player. Mm. And I think even Cater would be because it's an upgrade on a current player. He might not win you lots more points, but he'll make sure you don't lose points. Mm. The, the losing Coutinho, you only see it would cost us points. I, I, and I think this is where the interest in Coutinho is really important. That it's, I'm not going to get into a, you can sell him if you sign the other two. I think fans are looking at this, and I think the players, and I think the manager is looking at this as a, because the Coutinho stuff seems to have come from nowhere, like until, I'll say nowhere, it, it's come relatively recently, suddenly people expected it at some point, but probably not now. Everyone was planning in their head, improve this squad, but keep it together. You know, we were good when we were talking about players who might move on this summer early on in podcast. You know, we were imagining Moreno and Flanagan and Kevin Stewart, and we might sign a bit of a left back and maybe storage. You know, maybe storage, but we weren't talking about you know. Oh, we we might try and sign Van Dijk and Cater, but we might lose Coutinho. No, I, that I, would be a backward step. I was for waiting for Coutinho's new contract to start. I was sort of because it didn't start till July the first. I was mm-hmm. thinking there might be something before then, but as soon as that. July the first came. I thought, well, I think we're all right here. No release clause. Mm. It's, well, it's this is uh, this is I would ask, and I think Adam, you can probably trace it back to the name. I think I think that's the thing here is that that it's that, and this is a lesson in general. I think, and it's something that we've talked about. I talk about on shows quite a lot of the time. You can have football laughs at your plans. Mm. A lot of the times, you can have plans, and you know we used to Gerard Tuller used to talk about a five year plan, and I think that different Liverpool managers have tried to plan, and I think Jurgen Klopp is in different ways to some of those managers, very much a planner. But you can have your plans and football can find a way to laugh its head off very, very quickly. Every season's completely different, isn't it? If you look at the last few seasons, they've all been a complete, completely different and completely different to how you thought they were going to be when they started. So, um, so yeah, you can you can plan and you can plan for more than one season at a time. But really, you, you, can't, you can't be sitting in one summer thinking this is what we're going to do in 18, 19... Um, and it is. It, it's just. A, it's. It's a sliding doors moment. It's a key. It's a key moment right now for 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 the football club. If we get Cater Van Dijk and keep Coutinho, everybody's happy. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a sign of progress, which is what everybody always wants. And it gets more and more difficult the better you get. Uh, it's a, it's another step in the right direction. If you um, keep Coutinho and get one of Van Dijk and Cater, that's good too. I think. I think that's okay. I I, I think most people would be would be happy with that. Um, lose Coutinho and get those two. I think some you'd probably get a split, uh, but I think most people would probably think that wasn't a good thing. And lose Coutinho only get one of them or none of them. That's bad. Yeah, something Adam says there, uh, Carl. I'm, I'm writing it down. I don't know why. Really, I'm going to say it to you straight away. He said, uh, "Put it in your diary." Put it in my diary. He said <laughs> it's a sign of progress, uh, which gets harder and harder as you get better, hmm. which is. Is the problem in many in many ways? Like last season, Liverpool sign of progress was they went from it's it was relatively straightforward to improve the squad that had come eighth through to the squad that you then end up getting seventy six points and coming fourth with a squad which at times looked like it was playing the best football in the country, but finishes fourth and we go from there. It's now whilst it's quite clear in many ways, sort of the theory of how you improve. It's actually a lot harder to, 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 to now put into practice. And there's, there's a couple of reasons why, again, you can't plan for transfer fees suddenly going a bit weird and going a bit mad on the one hand and no one being quite sure what certain players are worth, for instance, we'll come on to talk about them, but it's, it now looks mad that we've got Salah for £35 million. Yeah. It now looks it's like we've same. got an absolute bargain it's at this same. stage. Um, but it is, that is the thing, isn't it? It gets harder the more, the, the better you actually get the job of that progress does actually become harder, more taxing, and you do begin to need possibly lads to wallop lads in training. Yeah, ideally, um, because as you're right, you say the the better you get at these things, your upgrades are always going to be smaller increments than you know. We're not going from I don't know Smeecher to Coutinho, where there's a world of difference between those type of players. Um, if you're looking to upgrade on people like. Well, Mane, for example, I know Salah's bought in as a sort of, you know, that's a similar sort of player. Then they're going to be much more difficult to get because they're that that level above Mane, which is, I'm not saying he is, but you know, but he's that sort of level. Mm. Whereas if you're going from somewhere like mid-table, where you think you know you've got 
the equivalent of, I don't know why I'm picking on him, Steve Harkness, for example, and then suddenly you've got Virgil van Dijk. That's a massive thing, and it's actually somewhat easy to get. But it's going the extra 5%, which is going to be harder than getting 20% sometimes. On that, and you've all mentioned van Dijk, because I think all all these things, when you talk about them, they're becoming increasingly linked, because with van Dijk, I think he's now now not gone on Southampton's tour, and I think we've got to make this nice for Southampton. But there is a wider thing here, and I I do wonder whether or not internally in Liverpool, Carl, they're having a chat, and they're sort of saying, we've got to find ways not to take the piss. And my point about this is that this season there's a serious chance if we sign Van Dijk we'd be playing for, at some, there'll be a game where we've got five former Southampton players in one eleven, and there's a point there isn't that if you're Southampton you really do just go just stop taking the piss out of us yeah. Liverpool have got to find maybe find, I'd be I'd be furious if I was them you know if you're Liverpool you've whilst the money obviously helps and that's the point yeah. and Southampton accept their place in the pecking order there's aside accepting their place in the pecking order and you being absolutely repeatedly ruthless with them yeah which i think is you know is a maybe just maybe we need to spread that out a little bit more rather than get ourselves in the situation where for instance southampton were looking for any excuse to report us to the premier league and go through all of that and make yeah. this hard for us yeah i don't, i think that apparently there are other clubs we can buy players from i think maybe we should investigate that from time to time um yeah, I thought that when I was asked a year ago about Van Dyke, and I thought, can we just leave them alone for a bit? You know, let them go somewhere else first, and then buy them afterwards, maybe if that if that doesn't work out. But um, yeah, I, I'm it, all right with it. I, but, well, but this, this I, is the nature of football. I, I, isn't it? My eventual aim is is for us to be Bayern Munich and just buy just if anybody Go if anybody looks players. like being good, then then we buy all their players. And if we if we're doing it one team at a time, then yeah, that's fine. Like everybody was making jokes. The, the, the Evertonians were saying, "Why don't you just buy Southampton? Maybe we should just buy Southampton. <laughs> destroy destroy the ferry terminal while we're at it as well. Cruise. So all the all the cruise terminal, all the cruise ships have to come here. Yeah, then we, we, we could balls solve, to Southampton. We could solve a lot of like <laughs> Liverpool's ills by. Like just signing Southampton. Yeah. Maybe what we could do is we could just go and sign their scouting department. That but might be, be an easy thing. Well, that, that's the process, though, isn't it? That you could come, they play there for a while, everyone gets to see them under Premier League conditions, and then move. But my thing's more. I'm, I haven't got a problem, Adam, with doing with being by Munich, with wanting to be by Munich and go through all that. But you've got to. My, I just sort of wonder if if it's just always the one side, if you know what I mean. But it, that, but that's weird because I'm just be, I know, it, you're right because you do have to spread but, it around a bit. But it's hard because the other side of that sign Everton's best player next year. Well, I'd love to sign Everton's best Everton's player. Everton's and Arsenal's is what I've got in mind. <laughs> Everton's and Arsenal's would be better, yeah. uh, but it's more. What are the, it's the strange thing about this league, though, Adam, which is what, what I was going to come on to say, which is that none of us are sitting here going, "Well, let's have West Brom's best player," because what would be the point? Uh, and, and that's why Southampton have sort of managed to create themselves into this position. And maybe they're happy, and maybe they think, "Listen, we always get the money in the bank," but they've got themselves in this position because they play good stuff. They mm. want to play from foot football. Great academy too. Good academy, so they end up putting themselves in this position. But there is a thing where you know maybe just maybe Liverpool come knocking, and they, be, they are. It, it becomes harder for them to look at their own supporters and say, yeah. "This is what we're doing." Sound? That's their problem. <laughs> I, I, I am. I, I'm in. I'm in team academy. Of fuck them. It's not. They're not. I can say it. I think. I don't think they'd be mad enough to cut the nose off to spite the face of we're going to sell them to anyone but Liverpool because it doesn't look like loads of football clubs are trying to sign sign back. It's not as bad as Everton and Man United. At least we're not giving them our old knackered ones. Exactly. No, we're just giving them. We're giving them, we're giving them lots of money. Although well, if they sign. want them, if they want them, then yeah, feel free. Can. You know. Yeah. You know, if they, if they want to say no, we want you to stay here. Then sign. Then players are naturally going to say to him, "Well, I'm going to make Liverpool want to sign me." So. Yeah, are you going to sign any players? Are we going to be, keep, comp- be competing for top four anytime soon? No. All right, Sanji, you've made me mind up. Thanks, you've convinced me. That's Southampton's job to look after their players. Yeah. To be they fair, they're not very good, are they? To be fair, just leave them lying around to buy them. But to be fair, you feel as though Everton are will, will, very willing participants in the Everton Man United partnership. Um, Strangest. I just like the idea of James' idea of players like left, left, left on their own, unguarded. Oh, well, they are. When, he's, when he's, suddenly he's a scout walks he's by, straight on his own. Yeah. I can just imagine, like you know, <laughs> us just watching Virgil Van Dijk just running, you know, running up and down the sides of their training ground on his own, next to the fence, and Klopp just through the fence. Psst. We don't want to sign you. <laughs> the, the sniper in the high tower <laughs> looking the wrong way at the wrong moment. Yeah. Klopp's flying a drone just, just over his head, whispering <laughs> well, in his ear. Well, it beats better. It's better than meeting them in Blackpool, isn't it? so you're not. Yeah. Uh, drones, drones are in uh, in a transfer sense. Last one on this, sort of going through all of them, is the what you were trying to all sort of say before, which is the idea of pulling it together um, and pulling it together in a manner which means that everyone can go, Carl. Everyone can say, this is this is the summer that we wanted, and 
that that that'll, that'll include the manager. It's important, I think, not to separate the manager off from the club in this and act as though, you know, the club are there just to sort of services women's needs and wants. That's not the case. That's not how football works. He's part of that process. Yep. He's the you know they, they 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 come to the conclusion as to how to do these things together. And also he's 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 been quite assertive in that regard with reference yep. to Coutinho. He, he's the one who says it's on me. He came in day one and said all of this will be on me. Yep. And I think it's important that we don't separate him. But it is. Liverpool start the season. They start on on August the twelfth. Um, the transfer window closes on August the thirty first. There's two Champions League qualifiers, five games to come in August. I think everyone wants to be able to go the football club's progression. It's what Adam said before. I think you know, no matter how hard it is, and I think I think in general now supporters broadly acknowledge it's hard. That feeling of general collective progression is yeah. crucial. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, it is absolutely. And um, you know, when when we left the pitch at Middlesbrough. Um, we all thought we're all going to come up a, by, a, by a, again by a small incremental um, to go that step higher for next season. The start, you know, August the twelfth with with a big squad, a big first team, and this, you know, and a big statement more than anything else. And uh, it is going to be difficult, but I think the fact that we're in these conversations, I think, is a really positive thing. I mean, obviously, there's a long way. Firstly, buying players isn't easy. It really isn't easy, and um, but the fact that we're in these conversations, I think, is a really positive thing, and and I keep saying it's just early. That's why it's not being done. It's just early. Well, we've got Salah, so which is like it's a hell of a start, I'd say. Uh, on Salah, uh, go back to you, Carl. There is the interview uh, the Klopp did with uh, with James Pearce, which is very good. Liverpool echo, uh, and he mentioned Salah and Mane being back uh, in first team, first team contention, first team fitness. It's, it really threw open how. How exciting it is if Liverpool can keep, can, you know, and the manager himself says it, keep them fit, keep them available, but that they can really, it gives, it does give them a ton of options. It gives them the option to to keep them fresh, to rotate them, to you know, maybe not 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 feel as though we've got to play them together every week, but where you know he's he's talking about each of them being able to play through the middle if he needs coming inside. It's it's what that moment where you go from having one. Uh, genuinely pacey, interesting attacking option to having two, yeah. uh, and then with the, being allied with the players around them, and it's not something we've had very often going back sort of the last fifteen twenty years. No, I mean at the, I read that interview. I thought it was really interesting. We said when um, Salah can play as a ten, as well. So you know uh, the, the big thing for me in that, if you've got Mane and got Salah, say on both wings, just as an example, and they're going to change over all time, how the hell do you mark that? Because it's hard enough marking mark Mane. When you just know he's playing in one position, and he's not going to move from that position because he's just he's faster than everybody else. If you've got two of them doing it, then who do you pass your man on to? And if and if Salah can play as a ten as well, then frankly I, I don't want to play against Liverpool if that's if that's the case. Yeah, we were hard enough to play against last season, weren't yeah. we? And it almost just feels like it shouldn't be allowed. It's a, it's a <laughs> it's a, it's an amazing prospect, and sometimes it does feel like Liverpool aren't allowed. Like you're only allowed one fast one. <laughs> but at the moment, it's it's looking like well, at the moment, as things stand, we've got two fast ones and one very good one behind them, and other options to go around them. Um, yeah, we are going to be uh, we're we're going to be very very difficult to 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 play against next season. Um, just need to sort the defence, I suppose. If you're a full back, if you're a full back, you're going to think to yourself, yes, he's like you know your mark on yeah. Manny. Ah, oh, yes, he's trotting over to the other side. Then you're going to see Salah come towards you. You're going to think, oh, fucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? It's going to be like one of them. You know. I'm I'm playing full back, you know, when someone skins you, you fuck off you little dickhead. That's and it, and I'm thinking we, you're dead good. Yeah. And now any full back's gonna be like, fuck off you little dickheads. Both thinking you're that good. And the daft thing is then is, is then it's like th- the third option is is oh it's all right we've cleared that oh it's Coutinho's on the edge of the area that's fine yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh he's got he, he's just running behind me and I've just tracked him and he hasn't even passed it to yeah. oh oh yeah because yeah, Coutinho just shot from thirty yards oh it's a goal yeah and, oh, as we talked about that was before pointless. it's one of your things Neil is is the you know if your first most likely second most likely third most likely scorers. It's just it, 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 it's it's yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it's adding it's adding probably joint first if you know if not joint second or something, and you you know you put in Coutinho bending one in at like fourth or fifth now. Defensively though as well that adds something doesn't it? It's like yeah. the, it is the the not I'm not going to compare quality but the threat they will pose. Defend. It, it's like when we had Suarez, Sturridge and Sterling yeah. because you def- they they defenders and midfielders are having to think. If I go this far forward, how quick have I got to be back? Yeah. So full backs have got to think to themselves, right? Am I leaving my centre halfs exposed? If I just literally move into Liverpool's half now to offer a pass, mm. suddenly that's a big thing because they'll be thinking Coutinho can get the ball, Henderson can get the ball, 
and they can get in behind, they can find Salah or Mane. They've got to worry about it going up to Firmino. Origi, they're just going to be thinking to themselves, hmm, this is really difficult. It's going to give them yeah. an awful lot to think about, which will impact on how they play against us as well, not just how we play. So, just, just on that, and I'll go see you, Adam, on this, because you and I have been watching Liverpool not win leagues for years, and uh, we've been doing it together. And we've done it's it not very an well so far. club, you know. Uh, I know, I know, but <laughs> I've, I've experienced this with, with, with Adam. But what, what one of the things that occurred to me when I was sort of planning this show was what happened... I'd argue in 2008-2009 when Liverpool uh, got themselves on the march towards the end of the season and what happened in 13-14 when Liverpool got themselves on the march was the players who were the threats, Torres, Gerrard, Suarez, Sturridge, were suddenly allied by a third player. So yeah. there was suddenly another one who terrified you. So, f- f- you know, and everyone forgets how good Jossie Ben Ayoun was at the yeah. back end of 8 9 Raheem Sterling in the second half of 13-14 very much comes to the fore. But that was the idea that for Ben Ayoun, he hit a purple patch of form. Sterling was a young player developing. It does seem as though with Salah and then, you know, Liverpool do add Keita. Liverpool have addressed that in the transfer market now yeah. to add that other, to add the, the lad who, who, who does do that, that thing where suddenly we get to see what it looks like when a team is just completely overwhelmed by the attack and options. Of- and, I think, and I think quite often, even, you know, previous almost their title challenges, uh, and maybe you're doing things with Roy Evans and things like that and saying, you know, one more attacker, maybe you could have been there. And, 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 There's definitely and you, one season under Roy Evans where yeah, that's the case. Yeah, yeah. And, and gen- generally, I think what, what we've seen is usually Man United were pipping us to those titles, not always. And they did that, didn't they? They, they had they had that extra attacker. Four strikers, yeah. Uh, that, and, and it's... It, and again, it is just it's just adding adding someone else into the mix when it's a lot. It is a long season, um, you know. Wh- whether it's a marathon, an eight hundred meters race, or a, or a sprint, uh, th- th- there tends to be a point where the person that has got you most of your goals uh, will, will 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 dry up a bit. Um, you know, it's happen- it happens to to to, ev- to every team. So I think that that. I, I guess the the one the one thing we haven't got is is the the one that that will guarantee you know with the Torres or the Suarez we have we haven't got that um, or it remains to be seen whether somebody whether Firmino or Mane can kick on and become that but at the moment that's the bit you'd say we haven't got we've actually got all the other bits we've got all the options uh, I'm not I'm not saying we necessarily need it to win the league but that's that's the bit out of those comparisons which is, which I think probably isn't there. Okay, um, on that. It's not our money, uh, Jay, but that thirty-five million for seller, uh, given the way in which the whole summer's sort of gone a bit mad, um, it does look it does look unbelievable business at this stage. It does look like you know again we're back to part of why Liverpool why there might be frustration if all the certain other players aren't added is not least because you know we seem to have got thirty-five million for seller, Robertson in for eight million quid. You know so far on the. It's a strange thing, isn't it? Being fair to the, the people who are looking after Liverpool's transfers, well, you know what, they can look at those two and they can well could well think, you know, we've done really well there for the club. Yeah. But the other hand then becomes, well, you, but we're, we're paying that money to free up the money to go and get the other lads. That said, it's still, it, you know, good business is good business. Yeah, it is good. As soon as you started saying that, I was, I was sitting there thinking to myself, it is good business. Liverpool should look at them and say, we've made the right signings. We've got lads in who improve us. They're better than the ones we, you know... They're going to repos- replace some players in the squad, so you know you'd expect Moreno to move on. But you know, you've essentially sort of just swapped Robertson for Kev Stewart. You take that; that's an improvement straight away. We've all just talked about obviously the, imp- you know, the the impact we expect Salah can make up front for us. That additional option um, gives Mane a rest. Sometimes you can play both, so it's good business. Good players. They are, they will be in danger. We, you know we said this about Robertson on Friday, but but Salah will be in danger of how good that is to sign in for that money will be forgotten by people, right or wrong, will be forgotten by people if we don't sign other players for the big sums. Because what's happening now is I don't even think it's just about the idea of it being Cater or Van Dijk. I think people are hearing the sums of money. Mm-hmm. And the, what they're thinking, probably to themselves, is Liverpool have got £130 million to spend them. So we better not spend the end of the summer having not spent that £130 million. We were sort of told last summer that we'd, we'd held off a year's money do you know what yeah. I mean? That that was that was a, a big, hold that off. Was a, now Naby Keita's another hold off, and we don't yeah, want that. Yeah. That's where people will get. We, it was there was a lot. That, the the story was the story that, to, that sort of allayed people's fears was Klopp said it's fine. I can get fourth with what I've got, and next summer we go big once we're in the Champions League. So he's done his bit, and that's where we're sort of saying now, okay, well, don't come say. on, your bit. So we better do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and I think we're trying to. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, yeah. That, we're not exactly taking you know three weeks off, are we? Yeah. Since we get to get yeah. it done, I think I think the negotiations are in place and everything. But um, I hope there's a plan B. I really do hope it just in case you know it is a genuine no. And I don't think there is such a thing as a genuine no until the, the deadline passes. It's but. the it's the drop off, I suppose, to that plan B. Who are these players that yeah. will obviously know they're a plan B and yet still be definitely good enough to improve us? It's a really um, tricky one. That also, how much how much of a plan B do you want to sign? Yeah, do you want yeah. to go and spend £40 million on a plan B if Naby Keita, who is being offered a 70 years 50 next year? That's the question they're asking themselves. And there's more difficult questions like, you know, we go for the plan B and they know we've got £70 million there because we just tried to spend it. So you spend the £50 million on a yeah, plan they B. They say, right, well, he fan. costs £70 million then. Yeah, yeah. Or, Whatever he is. or is he actually even going to settle in? Yeah. Is he actually, he's a plan, he'd be a plan B for a reason because mm. he's not as good. Mm. You're not sure he'll come in and settle down. Yeah. You're not sure he'll come in and... and, and Make much of a difference. So, it, and and this is you know this this brings in a wider conversation, doesn't it? About you know Liverpool LFC Twitter on transfers. You know it was a nuts world where people just have to see it almost so black and white. Mm. You know, FSG aren't spending money. Well, they are trying to spend money. Well, they're not doing enough. Well, there's lots of reasons probably for that. Mm. You don't. You're not an FSG FSG stooge if you don't agree with the idea that we're not spending money. And nor are you a lunatic for thinking Liverpool should spend money that they've got just try and actually understand maybe why they're not yeah. you know and, I, and I, I I I almost think Liverpool have got themselves so deep in with two players probably got themselves you'd imagine you know hopefully won't get us a transfer ban for this but you'd imagine Liverpool have probably agreed personal terms with both those players their yeah. agents will know 100%. what Liverpool are going to pay it's just yeah. about getting the clubs the respective clubs to do it Liverpool might be thinking to themselves, well, we've looked at the other options and it just doesn't stack up. And we're not going to talk about them. We don't know there's a plan B because mm. there isn't one. Because we've done all them stuff behind the, cl- behind the scenes and the player wants too much than what we think he's worth or he's just not for sale and he's not interested. So these that's, are all, that's, that's these... where you end up with a difficult conversation between Liverpool and the fans, though, isn't it? The, the, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't get them over but the, the line. But this is something they've... This is an historical thing for Liverpool on yeah, transfers yeah. because yeah. I think we've avoided having this difficult conversation in the past. And we keep getting the... We'll do it next summer. Yeah, we'll we'll sign players. Oh, there was no one. There's no one you can. Sign, you know, you get these little. Th- there's no one you can sign in January. It's like, well, we've signed boss players in January before me. I know. You I hate can't, that one. And it, it, but but it becomes a. What I think it's in danger of doing is it become an excuse as opposed to maybe it could, it could actually be the reason. But they've almost used it as an excuse one too many times. Maybe, so, it, I I think this is where Liverpool will find themselves. Maybe, with 130 million 130 million pounds of burn in their pocket, and they'll mm. spend it. Ala maybe, you know, hopefully not, the way they did on Andy Carroll. Yeah, or Balotelli. Or Balotelli. Yeah, it's 2015. I we went, we went and spent it because we, had, because we felt we had to spend it for other reasons. We never got Sanchez. Than actually yeah, because it's we, all about Sanchez, isn't it? We, we didn't get the, Sanchez. Because, so. because we didn't actually get the right players. Mm. And that's a really um, challenging thing, position for them to find themselves. Uh, we've won the Asia Cup, uh, get in. Um, it's... Over in Hong Kong. Carl. What did you do to celebrate? Uh, just I, I, to be honest with you, I was out for days. Um, <laughs> it was. It's you know it's a it's a it's a preseason tournament and they're sound and they happen. Uh, we've got the Aldi one to come uh, in with the big boys. Uh, but Carl, the thing that you can see is that the first thing is that you know when we were talking about Salad and Manor, you can see Liverpool congesting the pitch over on one side of the pitch and then yeah. looking to release big time. Yeah, yeah, it, it's. Um, I think. I think the most important thing for me has been Jordan Henderson's um, form uh, over the last few games. And I know it, they're just like basically keep fit games and everything. They don't really count. But I think it's been very interesting the way he's played. Um, he, he seems to like hitting the wing very early, um, and I think that's probably going to be the focus of next season. I don't know if that's a specific change or if that's because he's been away and that's what he likes to do normally. But um, I think that's. Yeah, and this it comes back again to Man- Mane and Salah. I think that's going to be a, a huge thing in next season. It's going to be. This is going to be the widest Liverpool side we've seen in years. I really do think it's going to be. They're going to be wide, and then they're going to be looking to come inside. That's the strange thing yeah. about them. The wide, the wide, the wide, and then suddenly they're really inside. And yeah. That's quite. You know, it, it's it's maybe thinking through how to make the pitch as big as possible. My, my name's goal uh, at the Emirates. I think it's going to be a lot like that. I'm going wide, but when I come in, I can do this. I was thinking of his goals against Tottenham at home. Um, I think there was some, just something about the view I had of those goals. You can really see. That, that that run he makes is that basically it's it, it's it, I think it was his wrong side as well he was coming in from his wrong from his wrong yeah, side yeah the, the derby was as well um, yeah uh, and, and and interestingly 
Klopp has mentioned that he's sort of when he was talking about his options, he sort of mentions how how they both players could be on their wrong side, and, they, and it suits them to be on their wrong side at times. Um, another, another thing from the preseason games is the mouth watering prospect of Coutinho linking up with Salah, um, and and obviously adding Mane into that mix. But Coutinho and Salah looked so good uh, as, as as a two. Really, that love the little the little dink in for for, for Salah. Yeah, nice. Day. Absolutely Very loved nice. it. Lovely one two. I haven't watched the pre-season games in much depth, but I have seen lots of the highlights and mentioning the Coutinho Salah goal there. And it comes back to the idea, you know, maybe I'm talking to Coutinho to, to, for the move to Barcelona here, but Xavi gave an interview a long time ago talking about what it was like playing at Barcelona. And he talked about, as a midfielder, for them, you're faced with the question always of, where am I going to play this? So you look one way, play it there, no, there, no, there, no. Because there's a man marking, I play it all the time, you've got Messi's and the like. And then he finds a space to play the ball. And he goes, okay, now the space is there, I'll play it there. If you're Coutinho, faced with your absolute abundance of riches of players you can pop it off to, that's a frightening prospect for... Yeah. For, 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 for the, and we've seen that already in pre-season. Now, I think some of these pre-season matches have been good because... You know, certainly, the Asia Cup. We were playing against Premier League quality. This isn't just playing some, you know, random team. This is Premier League quality players, and we'll see it. I'm sure in the Ardy Cup as well. Mm. You're playing against really good level teams now. Yet, whilst they're only getting back into their fitness as well, they are good players still. Yeah. They're not like you know, two centre halves who play non-league football. You know, at Tramia or something. This, this is these are lads who are like. You know, it's their job to play football, and you get paid yeah. tens and tens yeah. of thousands of pounds a week to do it. So they're, they're all right at it, even if they're not fit. So I think it's it's quite good to see Liverpool being able to do that link up play already. So you can clearly get a sense of when they're in full stride. You can see what yeah. Coutinho is going to be looking to do. It's like not not they they've been playing almost full intensity, but not for anywhere near ninety minutes. It's yeah. like it's like they've all been basically a forty five minutes of football. Um, within within those games, I don't know whether that was agreed between the teams, but it seemed it, it seemed to be, for some of those games that it that it that it has been that everyone sort of started and stopped and started and stopped at the same time, um, uh, uh, with sort of linking the, the the Henderson and Coutinho comments and what Jay was saying about Coutinho. I think uh, Henderson does that too, actually, but from deeper, uh, yeah. and and it's it's one of them again where the teams if it, you know if if a team decides that they're just going to put two men on Coutinho, then Henderson can do it. Um, and and it's that thing again of options where where you, you if you if you if you if your Coutinho option is is uh, blocked then the Henderson option is there. And the other one is look sharp, Carl, as well. Just plays on be mentioned there. Uh, Solanke and Sturridge, I think, have both looked in different ways. Yeah, really, really sharp. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of pressure on Solanke because you know he's going to be the next big thing, and you know we're already looking at down, down the road at that. There's a mate of mine who says he should be starting. Do you think it's not quite wow. not, yeah exactly he's really because I hope he's listening to this because we just said that's not going to happen mate um, but uh, and I'm, I know the manager said that story is the best he's looked since he's been uh, and, he, and he does generally look good and you know he had the miss against Wigan but um, um, yeah I think, I think that looks really good I mean if they're going to be your third and fourth options then <laughs> more than happy with that it's uh, on that card. I mean, you know, you can't be complacent. Three injuries and things look less good. Yeah. We saw that last season. Things begin to look a lot harder, but. It does look like there's genuine options there, and this is the. It is just a line to what's there. That's why I think there is such a desperation to see the, 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 the you know, to keep coming back to the, the, the core football and thing we're talking about here, which is Van Dijk and Keita. And that's why there is that desperation to see it done because you can you can begin to really even if you get even if you end up being wrong, even if you know we the, the the wheels all fall off etc. If you do get the get get the two more pieces of absolute quality in there, you can very quickly begin to go. You know what? This is it's a really exciting squad. Possibly the most exciting and full squad we've had since after the treble season under Julio. Which means more options. Which means more options as well. I mean, the, the big thing is obviously, is obviously the West Ham game where he thinks he'll go to with diamonds. It's going to no, no one wanted to go there to get that result on that day, and we absolutely battered him. And that was the day when actually Coutinho was only looking at storage. He was his best mate on the pitch, and I think he found him more than any other player that day. Yeah. If we can do that and thinking, okay, well, if I'm, I'm gonna go back to a three now, or you know, the options are already there, and um, and you know, Solanke is different from from Sturridge, who's different from Firmino, and that, that and it, it's all about as many options as possible. 
It is indeed. All right, the info has been in Hong Kong. Uh, there's been loads and loads of really good stuff. And uh, John and Gareth had a fantastic time. Thank you to everyone who came to the shows in Dubai and Hong Kong uh, on their behalf. And thank you to everyone who just had a chat with them, really, uh, whilst they were mooching around the place. They watched both the games and uh, covered them in our post-match shows uh, on the Anfield Rap Player. Uh, they've been available for you. But the other thing that they did as well whilst they were out there was they interviewed a number of different footballers, but they got half an hour uh, with Jordan Henderson. Uh, this is Monday, uh, and this will be released at 8pm uh, on Monday evening. Evening. So if you're listening to this, the chances are uh, it's already out. Um, but anyway, uh, regardless of that, uh, here's a, here's a, an excerpt from that interview from John and Gareth. I, I just want, I just thought, you know, it might be another thing, like sort of like what John's talking about, about sort of perception from outside and what it's actually like inside. So, you know, for instance, when I was watching Trent and Ben Woodburn today, it, it, you know, they are at that level. They, they didn't, they didn't, you don't, you're not looking at them going, well, they shouldn't be there getting stuck in they were having a go they, they, they showed real quality and they looked like they should be part of the squad oh definitely i think you can see the talent they've got talent in abundance really um but they've also got the right mentality as you can see they apply themselves properly um every day in training around um pre-season tours around melwood they apply themselves properly and that's a big part of it as well you've got to be obviously first and foremost you've got to have talent but you've got to have the right mentality um, to to develop that um, and work as hard as you possibly can to improve. Listen to the people around you in terms of the manager and the, the players that, that want to help you, um, which they do. And you can see that um, when they play, when they train. Fantastic players, fantastic people. Um, and it's a credit to them because um, they've been fantastic this pre-season. I mean, last season they've had a, a great season, so they could have come back. And could have just sort of went through the motions, but I think this preseason have gone up another gear. And um, to be fair to them, and they don't, I think they don't just want to be part of the squad. They want to be in the team. They want to be playing. Um, and I think that's huge for us as a team. Everybody should have that mentality that they want to get into the team. Um, and that's healthy, really. Um, and hopefully we can continue that for throughout the season. Of course, it's going to be difficult at times when you're not playing, um, when you're injured or whatever, but. Um, you've got to stick together as a squad, and that's what the managers sort of got over to us, over to us really well. That it's about the whole squad, um, and that that mentality's got to go throughout the season, really. I mean, and that's what the mentality seems to be, be starting to stretch elsewhere in the club as well. I mean, you know, it seems to me now that the under twenty threes, the under eighteens, obviously Stevie's back there and he's managing the under eighteens now. It, it kind of feels to me, look again. I'm I'm only looking in, but it, it like the whole club has got a real sense of purpose and a sense of direction about it, a style of football that's sort of you know following through the levels as well and a pathway up. And, and it just sort of feels like you know, okay, there will be people who always moan about, oh, well, we, we should have signed this star player and that star player and this fella, and we haven't spent enough this summer and blah 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 blah. blah. But you know, when you think about where the club's been in not so recent times. Um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, potential bankruptcy or mad owners and all that sort of thing. It actually feels right now to me as a fan that the club's in actually a good place. And again, is that reflected inside the club? Or are you, is everyone sort of, is there a buzz? Is there a together throughout the club? Yeah, definitely. I sense the same thing as you really. I think throughout the club, there's a, there's a real buzz. I think we've got one of the best managers in the world to start with. <laughs> Um, which is obviously a good thing. Um, if you want to be winning trophies, and there's no better, better person than him, you've got an unbelievable um, group of players in terms of talent, um, how much they want to work, how much they want to improve, and the togetherness. Um, and then you look at, yeah, like you see from the academy going up, you, you, you're hoping um, the likes of Ben and Trent will be more coming up, hopefully. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a, a real sense of excitement, and and hopefully, uh, well, really, it's down to us as players to to go and do the business on the pitch. Everything's set for us to go and perform. Um, so it's down to us to go and do the best we can for this football club and and start winning things again. Um, training ground, another thing, uh, which is developing, um, which is exciting for everyone. So, like you see, everything's there um, in place, but. At the end of the day, we've got to go and do the business on the pitch. John, Gareth, but most importantly, the Liverpool captain, Jordan Henderson. It's a half an hour long interview. I've listened to it. I listened to it this morning. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, Jordan comes across really well, as you'd expect, uh, but lots of fascinating little bits and pieces of insight in there. Uh, if you don't currently subscribe, 
well, two things. Firstly, uh, please think about doing so. We think it's going to be a very interesting season for Liverpool and we've got all the coverage you need. I've spent much of the weekend planning shows up until October the 9th, so I'm well aware of everything that we're doing uh, at the Anfield Wrap around uh, the tour player stuff. Just a quick note on that. Because there's a lot of shows does not mean that anybody has to listen to them all. There is not a test at the end. It's a bit like Netflix. You listen to the ones that you like and you don't listen to the ones that you don't. Uh, No one makes you watch all of Netflix. Uh, But what we do try to do is put as wide a range of shows out as possible, uh, somewhere between 10 to 14 a week. And as I say, don't be overawed by that. My point is more that if there's only four or five you want to listen to, you'll find those four or five very much worth it. The second thing is that the Jordan Henderson interview is fantastic. Uh, It is worth subscribing for, listening to, and having a little tryout and see whether or not this is indeed for you uh, across the sort of the weeks that follow uh, £5 a month as I said earlier on and the third thing is that all new subscribers will be entered into a draw uh, between now those who subscribe between now and next Monday uh, at 12 uh, next Monday that's the 31st of tw- 31st of July at 12 noon uh, be entered into a draw all new subscribers to win a signed shirt there will be for existing subscribers other things happening don't be worrying about that but uh, new subscribers so if you've been thinking about it you're not quite sure um and are and it's a good time to do it as I say with the season on the horizon uh, the two European games which we will be having previews for and a media post-match content as those matches hit the final whistle for all the review shows where we take a long look back at what it is that we're doing uh, and for all the shows where we mess about have a ton of fun look at things historically all of that sort of stuff it's all there but it starts with the Jordan Henderson interview this evening uh, 8pm uh, £5 a month for the Anfield Rap player uh, and it's something that I recommend very very highly indeed and you can think that I should but you know I do so fulsomely uh, full-throatedly anyway um, moving forward to- I do as well Thank you uh, Carl, Jordan, Jordan Carl, obviously thought it was good too Henderson put it on his Instagram didn't straight he? Straight away Must have thought it was good yeah. M- S- Too much annoyance I think to all that um, To all everyone on the, the Anfield rap <laughs> Who, who, who might have wanted to manage the message a little bit more Not <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Jordan This is our interview not yours You just <laughs> stick to talking and playing mate <laughs> <laughs> All fair points from McKenna uh, Can't argue with the facts on that one uh, But no Lovely fella uh, Won't have a word said against him unless it's by me um, the, you had the SOS event uh, on Saturday, Jay. First and foremost, yeah. in fact, I'll go to Carl before I go to you. And the first thing that uh, I've, I've had, a look, uh, had a look at some of the video, Carl, you were there for the duration. It was firstly conducted in the spirit that I think uh, Jay very much wanted it to be, but not just Jay. I think that everybody wanted it to be to be respectful, polite, decent, and it was all of those things. It was, yeah, it, it really was. And we, we kept saying all the way through the day, everyone in the room kept saying it. it's such an emotive issue to, you know, to, to, for this club more than any other when it comes to the debate of rail standing uh, and safe standing. Standing. And there are many people who are fervently, fervently against the idea, bearing in mind what happened in 89. And there are people who um, are desperate to see an increase in, in, the, in atmosphere at the club and uh, and see this as a way of getting you know more of an atmosphere on the cop or whatever the, the safe standing area would be. And uh, and people put heads on this subject all the time. And <coughs> it's uh, But I think everyone can see everyone else's point of view, and that was a big focus of the of the actual afternoon itself, where we thought, okay, we don't agree with everyone in this room, but there was no shouting, there was no aggressive um, to and fro's across the aisle or anything like that. It was it was handled in a really respectful way, and there was a wide range of voices heard. Yeah, very. um, As Jay will say, that you read out comments from um, from people who couldn't be there on the day, and um, they were very passionate statements and. yeah, I think I think pretty much every single voice was covered there. You know, literally, and the, the most important thing for me was was there was a man who stood up at some point and said, "To be honest, I still don't know. I don't know what I think," and which is a perfectly valid um, standpoint to take. Yeah, it was um, it was significant uh, significant meeting um, for us really. It was a, I, I think it's been a it's the culmination of of a lot of work and thought. Um, that we've we've put into this to get to a point where we felt comfortable that enough people knew enough about it to be able to make a decision in a vote. Uh, lots of people, I imagine, probably already had a an inkling or a firm view on what they wanted to say, uh, but we wanted to ensure that they had a different views from people to make that choice and, and decision. And you know, it, it the the meeting was a was a welcome opportunity to do that. Um, the way people who were in the room, uh, as as Carl says, who you know were saying they didn't know Damien Cavana, who will happily let me talk about his comments. He was a Pen Three survivor, uh, was there with uh, the the son of um, the person he went the match with, who died. 
Um, and even within you know, Paul's dad, his mum doesn't want it. Paul is in favour of it. Damien's undecided and wants to know a lot more about it. So, you know, there we're in the tragic circumstances of two people is is the whole debate yeah. and, and where people are at. There, there, there is no easy answer for lots of people. There is division amongst families. There's, I say division, but, you know, divided opinion probably is better. Um, there are different views amongst supporters. But, you know, I think people were able to hear that. I feel a lot more aware and informed of it now as, mm. as you know, as an individual. I feel a lot more confident that I could actually represent the views of our members and supporters by extension in talking about this on, on a wider stage of what people think. Um, it It has... You know, there's big big themes that have come out of it which have been really useful around choice, safety on both sides, uh, management, you know, on both sides, what you'd expect. Uh, but but lots for us to, to look at moving forward and I think hopefully now, you know, we can we can get to a point where we at least understand what some people think. You know, a fair number of voted already, we'd encourage lots of people to vote. But use that vote then and and I think I, I see this, whatever the outcome of this as the start of any process and conversation around these matters. Uh, and maybe, you know, I think one of the things that come up from it as well was um, a few people from the Hillsborough Justice campaign and, and family members who said, you know, maybe this is the kind of forum in which Liverpool should look to take issues like this forward themselves to ensure that as many voices as possible are heard on, you know, such a uniquely sensitive subject. There's, Adam, <clears throat> as part of the, the conversation on this, what one of the things that is important um, is... The Liverpool supporters grabbing what is a national debate, uh, and that's well, grabbing what I mean is isn't taking ownership, but being part of that. And I think that that's something which a few supporters or support <coughs> supporters who are maybe a little bit ignorant will be surprised as to how live a topic this is in a Liverpoolian context. That Liverpool support, and not just from the idea of shutting it down, but instead wanting to be wanting Liverpool to be part of this. It's it's a matter of grasping the nettle really, and not allowing the idea of that that it's it, it that you just can't talk about it in Liverpool circles, that it's blocked, that it's this, that mm. or the other. I think it's something which, you know, having this debate, having it be covered publicly, there was a lot of good reportage of it after the fact, having it become, you know, just a, an acknowledgement point that it is being had is, mm. is, is good is, is good on a wider national level. It's always, I mean, from a, from my point of view as a match-going fan who knows a lot of different crowds, I think it's quietly been a mainstream conversation for longer than people might think, as you say, Neil. I'm and and I was just thinking when you were talking then, Jay, I think you'd to be congratulated for um because ten, seven, five years ago, I don't think we'd we 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 imagined we'd be where we are now in terms of this conversation being had so publicly. Um and I think that that there's been different things that have that have that have added to that sort of you know certainly they, the HIP uh, the, the 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 panel um, the Hillsborough panel the um, Celtic introducing it and what's been happening sort of Scotland leading the way um, and 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 it has led us to being where we, where we are now not to say you know that 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 anything's been decided or you know the conversation's over but certainly I think that that there is there is for, for just talking personally I've always wanted Liverpool to lead the way. Uh, with with this, I've always thought that uh, rather than it being it, at all the other clubs sort of, or a lot of other people want it to happen and it has to stop at our door because of Hillsborough. I always thought that because of Hillsborough, we should be leading this conversation. Um, and certainly, since the independent panel results showed once again, it was not standing that caused it. I think because I always thought that that should be the conversation that we that we were having. That it, that was not the cause. Um, and I think by I, I my personal feeling was that by um, Liverpool fans talking about we shouldn't do it because of that. That was almost given given a, a, a get out route to the to the actual causes. Um, so there's the, there's that and and you know the 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 personal yeah and and and, and then we get to the point where where. You, you've you've got all people's different opinions about it and having an open conversation and that's where we are and you know I won't sort of go any uh, any further into in, into into my own my own feelings because they're they're my my own feelings but certainly I think yeah it's a, it's, it's a positive thing where we are now and um and, and I, I I've been on and, and and voted and couldn't make it to the meeting but yeah as I say well well done for where for for, for how you've got it's Carl just to go back and it it might seem like reiterating the point but I think it's important to reiterate it it is crucial that voices are heard that voices are heard 
internally, for want of a better phrase, amongst the Liverpool supporter body, first and foremost. And voices are heard. Heard doesn't just mean voices are voiced. It means that people are listening to them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that voices are heard on the one hand. And then there's a, on the other hand of this, that, that again, that nationally, it's acknowledged that the Liverpool voice is heard, if you know what I mean, yeah. and that, but also that it has spoken again, that it has happened, that it has it has been a thing, and it's something which I'd like to think anyway. Supporters of other clubs, firstly, I'd like to think would be, look at what's happened here within Liverpool and think, good lord, you know that shows yet again how switched on the Liverpool supporter body is, how respectful the Liverpool supporter body can be of one another, how the decency that can that, that can hold forth. But secondly, also go well, they've managed to have this conversation. If they can have this conversation, we can all have this Absolutely. conversation. Absolutely, because I, again, I, mean, I, I, I said um, in the meeting, is, um, um, it is the emotion. It, it, I thought it was really interesting to see what the other clubs were doing because they having the same to both, but without the enormous, you know, events of 1989, and to see what they're doing now. And apparently, it's been very well received throughout the country. But and I think people are looking to Liverpool to say, if if any club in the world are talking about this and genuinely talking about it as an option, whether it'll happen or not, we don't know. But um, that that's just an enormous step because it has taken us a long time to reach this point, as Adam says, and uh, I think that's absolutely huge. I really do. Um, start of a process, not the end of a process, both for Spirit of Shankly and also in general, Jay. Um, but you want people to, uh, as many people as feel comfortable, as many people that want to, to engage in the process. Uh, how do you go about doing that? Um, the first and most important thing to do now would be to register your view. Um, so there's two ways. If you're a Spirit of Shankly member. Log in on our website and you'll see a link to click to vote. You, as then a Spirit of Shankly member, and then this bit is for everybody, should uh, vote in our Survey Monkey, po- Survey, Survey Monkey um, poll, which is on our social media, but as well, the link can also be found in the news section on our website. You will regularly see us tweet that each day. Um, it's pinned at the top of our Twitter. It's pinned at the top of our Facebook. Um, I'm sure the Anfield Rap and others will tweet it as individuals. Mm-hmm. So... Please do look out for it and do vote. There are seven questions you'll be asked within our wider poll. The first one being, obviously, um, on the introduction of rail seating, are you? And then there's four options in favour, against, undecided or don't know enough about it, want to know more. Um, and then there's a series of other questions which just help us inform and understand where people's views are coming from. But it is, as you say, Neil, the start of a process. And you know, one of the things I want to make clear to people is we have, at all junctures, given... Um, the respective Hillsborough groups and individuals and authorities and opportunities to have their say. Um, and this isn't going to be, here's our vote, go and do what you want. We, you know, I have already began to think about how we present any results. Um, and if, for example, the vote was to come back in favour, you know, we will be very strong in telling anybody campaigning for this that this is our voice, not yours, for you to run off and say, well, Liverpool fans have said this is OK, so we'll do what we want. As Damien Cavana said on Saturday, you know, we have lived this as a city. Many, many individuals have experienced it personally and deeply and closely, uh, and they should be heard in this. And, you know, and I think, importantly, for anybody who sees you know, a national campaign um, for the introduction of rail seating, they should at least listen and hear the views of those who disagree with them um, and at least answer those questions as we've tried to do so and sat in our conversation. And You know, we, this isn't necessarily going to be campaign for Liverpool, this is an entire other conversation, but, you know, we we do need to get Liverpool supporters' views. You know, I'm the last person who's going to say supporters shouldn't have a voice in it, but, you know, there was a danger we were almost going to be referenced and never spoken to about it, uh, just assume that people yeah. you know, would think one way or another and I think that, you know, there's a real disservice to our Liverpool football supporters, you know, view this. So, you know, hopefully this this is some way to get an engaging views. You know, we've had a decent number of people who've who've taken part so far so far, but you know, it is important to think that everybody who does have a view does vote so that it can be as representative as possible. Indeed, uh, one of the things that always carries weight in any survey is the number of respondents. Uh, please do respond to the survey. Please do so honestly uh, and, um, and um, openly uh, insofar as you can about uh, just to sort of give the background as to the where you're getting that opinion from. Uh, listen, uh, thank you very much to Jay uh, for taking the time today, to Carl and to Adam, uh, John and Gareth as well, and Jordan Henderson, their other voices that you've heard this week on the Anfield Wrap. I've been Neil Atkinson and that this week is the Anfield Wrap. <laughs>